Inequality, a show where we talk about social inequalities and how to overcome them. This is our second episode, and here I am joined with um, Ms. Purnima Batish, who runs um, a magazine called Women at Work, and she has a website called um, Think Equality. Is that right? Think, or- think Equal. Yes. Um, and so... Uh, she's here to tell us about gender discrimination, uh, particularly around women working, um, uh, women working, basically. Um, so first question I'd like to ask you is, what are some examples of gender discrimination in the workplace that make it harder for women um, to work than it is for men? Right. So first of all, thanks, Gursumar, uh, for doing this. And, and, and it's, it's a pleasure to have young uh, people, especially young men, uh, doing this kind of uh, discussion because I think that's, that's really the need of the hour and the change that we want to bring about the whole place. Um, uh, before I talk about gender discrimination, I just want to you know, put up a few things in terms of where we stand today. Um, the participation of women in the workforce in India, and I'm talking about urban participation, uh, has been declining consistently over the last 20 years or so. Uh, India is amongst the lowest in terms of labor force participation. That means organized sector employing women in the workforce. So that's, uh, you know, that's quite counterintuitive to all the buzz and the Women's Day celebrations that you see around India and the world on um, women in the workforce, right? So that's one. Second, uh, while every um, uh, reputed and uh, thought leading corporate uh, has had some efforts put in to improve and make a difference, uh, in the last five years or so, unfortunately, the needle has moved not beyond 20%. So we started 20% of women in the workforce, which is corporates, uh, about five years ago. In spite of all our efforts, we are still there. So it really hasn't moved the needle, right? And the third is about um, the uh, women uh, who have taken a break from work to either um, uh, for maternity, uh, yeah. to you know, to take care of a child, or for elder care, or for home management. In in India, that's close to 20 million women. And just to give you a perspective, one one research shows, if we put all these women together in one place, uh, we would be the third largest city after Shanghai and Beijing. So that is the number of women who are out of the workforce. Uh, graduates and postgraduates just because they've taken a break. So that's just to give you a number perspective. Um, this is women that have worked but um, have chosen taken a break. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Chosen a voluntary uh, or whatever. I mean, yeah. uh, a forced societal break. So that I think gives a give a gives a context of um, uh, I, I, and discrimination. Uh, you know, I want to kind of qualify that word. Discrimination is voluntary. Discrimination is unconscious as well, right? So there are two kinds of discrimination. One is conscious, where I consciously leave women out of some privileges or some uh, areas, which is because I think about women in a certain way. Uh, But there is a lot of subconscious and unconscious discrimination that, you know, we come up uh, virtually all the time. And I've been working in the gender space now. So I come from the corporate world with about a couple of decades of experience. Um, And of the many companies I worked in was Godridge, uh, IBM, uh, etc. I was uh, the uh, talent. I was was heading the talent for India, South Asia for them. And then last five years, I've been working on the gender diversity space. Unfortunately, uh, Gursimar, for us, uh, the the issues of women having to um, show their commitment to work is always been the underlying both conscious and unconscious discrimination. So every woman has to continuously prove that career is not a choice. Career is something that she wants to have because simply she wants to have that. I mean, you don't ask a man, uh, what, what, will you sit at home or will you work? But a woman is always asked, what would you want to do after marriage or after childbirth, right? So in India and in most societies, women have a choice. 
and unfortunately that choice ends up in discriminating them uh, or discrimination against them where people tend to believe that the moment a woman has a family uh, gets married and has kids uh, you know she will automatically prioritize that over uh, you know over anything else because they think that's a woman's job right so that that's one kind of clear discrimination that happens second is um, the um, we call it the ideal worker stereotype where um, organizations any anybody you know you pick up entrepreneurs you pick up uh, you pick up um, uh, working people the concept of an ideal worker is someone who's so immersed in work can work 24 by 7 doesn't care about holidays doesn't care about vacations doesn't care about anything if work is important she she or he will drop everything and get to work right that's that's who we glorify we use the word workaholic right and workaholic unfortunately is a good word right uh, and uh, m- many people think of that now when when we look at women the assumption in the corporate world is that women are not workaholics because they've got other things to do yeah. and for them they will deprioritize a work for other issues so the ideal worker stereotype ideal worker stereotype has been a male who is who for whom work is first and i think that is really where this entire discrimination piece comes in also in terms of taking women up the ladder um, when women so so one of the other statistics i want to share with you is uh, almost all companies have about 30 to 40% women coming in at the entry level so you know from colleges from campuses uh, from um, you know institutions they come in after 5 years into the job is when these women start quitting and as you go up the leadership level i mean today if i were to ask you uh, name um, you know name five corporate women leaders who are heading companies um you know it's it, it's a question that many of them stop at number 2 or number 3 right uh, beyond that you can't think of people who are leading i mean a, a ceo who's a woman right very very few indian companies and very few global companies have that so unfortunately over 100 years um women in leadership whether you take it whether you pick up politics i mean you look at the chief ministers of all the states how many chief ministers are women right that's also leadership right that's also leadership in the workplace so that is the gender discrimination uh, primarily because of the societal and the cultural um, uh, fabric that we've been brought in and also because of the fact that women have traditionally been grown uh, to uh, grown to understand and assume that taking care of home is their core business mm. you can do work you can have a career but that's all on top of it you have to do a good job of both right you can't say i'm a good i'm a good i'm a ceo but i don't take care of my children that's not allowed for women so that uh, for uh, for me uh, has been one of the biggest biggest challenges that i've seen in the workplace on gender discrimination personally um jade uh what about um issues in when when they when they when they've gotten the job and they're in um these executive positions right where they've made their way right. up the ladder through all this discrimination i assume i think it gets harder right the further up you go with absolutely um so what what are i think we we've been uh, talking about issues about how when they're getting into the work it's hard for them but what about issues that they um experience in the workplace when they've gotten the job like um yeah so traditionally uh, gursimar the the way women have been brought up is uh, they um, so you know women are taught to to be nice uh, to be soft uh, to be gentle uh, to uh, to not ask for stuff so they you know women who demand stuff or say i deserve a promotion are not seen very well so uh, i'm i'm sure you've heard of the classic jokes of how men can be assertive but women are aggressive when they ask for the same stuff right so the same word it changes from aggression assertion to aggression when women use it also women who um, uh, women are not it, it's assumed that uh, w- your work should speak for itself you don't need to focus on branding or visibility of your work so these are a few things that women um, especially in asian and other societies are brought up on and this translates into the work because if you have if you if you look at men or women who have to grow up the ladder ultimately you need to not just work hard you need to work smart you need to show that you're capable of going up the next level and you need to ask for what you deserve unfortunately uh, b- by the way there is a statistics that shows uh, men will raise their hand 
uh, to claim something or ask for a promotion, even if they are 60% sure that they are qualified for it. On the other hand, women will not raise their hand and ask for anything till they're sure they're 100% qualified for it, right? So, so that is a that is a classic difference between um, uh, between men and women in terms of the way they're brought up uh, from a psychology and a sociology point, and that translates into the workplace, which results in women getting lesser promotions, lesser you know you've heard about pay parity, right? Women uh, mm -hmm. across the world, even in professions like uh, uh, cinema, which is Hollywood and Bollywood sports, exactly. women for the same caliber get lesser paid or less money compared to men. And primarily that's because, you know, women don't ask or they have not asked for what they deserve. And those are some of the things they face in the workplace. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, what do you think? Um, so our listeners are going to be of both genders ranging from ages uh, from anywhere from the age of like 13 to um, 50 plus. What is the message you want to get across, particularly to the men that are listening to this? Right. So, um, so okay, I don't know what I can say to men who are 40 plus <laughs> because they, uh, you know, they, they, there's, a, there's a bigger uh, mindset issue there. But uh, I think it, it's, to, it's to everyone. Um, I think the only way you can get more women in the workforce is to be equal at work and at home. Uh, this, this current, present uh, crisis of coronavirus that we're all going through has clearly shown that there is a lot of work which goes understated or uh, unseen at home and men have realized the amount of work that is required to keep a home running yeah. uh, and I think the, while we've been pushing for women to get equal at work I think we need to get men equal at home because only if when a child is sick a man gets up from office and goes home to take care of the sick daughter or son can the woman continue in office not the other way around that he calls up his wife and says can you go home and take care of the children or pick her up or him from school right so equal equal work uh, in the offices and equal homes which means equal participation in caregiving equal participation in uh, taking care of homes and kitchens divide the work we're not saying everybody's good at everything but that's critical second uh, is um, for men i'd encourage them uh, to not make careers a choice for their partners so this is for the young audiences who don't currently have partners uh, if you tomorrow get married or look for a partner i think you should be very very clear that for it's it, your career is as important for you as it is going to be for another woman who's got the same amount of education as you have right mm -hmm. so uh, don't make it a choice for her make it an identity because a woman needs to be known for more than just being a wife of someone or the mother of someone. Yeah. She needs to be known because she is someone because of her talent. So let her make her talent count yeah. and uh, yeah. be equal is what I would say for, um, for men and for women actually. Um, yeah. Uh, one last thing. Um, so um, I think three days ago you posted an update on your website about how Indian parents, um, Indian fathers are more involved in parenting. Right. Um, three times more involved than they were two generations ago. Um, and what do you think are maybe uh, things that we're doing? Um, I think I've, I've been trying to talk a lot about the things that we shouldn't be doing, right? Or the things that are negative. But yes. what do you think yes. we're doing as a society that's been making this uh, wondrous change, right? About parents, um, male fathers being more involved than they ever were. Yeah, so I think this also comes good similar with the with the generational change. So I think we are talking about millennials who are new fathers now, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, that generation has grown on a on a on a good intake of technology, global news, things that are happening around the world. Right. And uh, unlike unlike for Generation X and baby boomers. For millennials, uh, and, and, and thankfully, because of your Insta photographs, because of Facebook, mm -hmm. parenting is now cool, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's okay to change nappies. It's okay to, uh, you know, have, uh, so uh, I, I forget the name, but a very popular Hollywood star uh, pushed for having uh, changing rooms for kids uh, where fathers are allowed at airports, right? Because changing nappies is only a woman's job traditionally. 
so i think um, all these all the changes in technology and social media are positive and 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 it's made parenting cool it's good to pick it's good to post daddy or daughter daddy son photographs today in the public spaces and to show that you know you're doing stuff and also today thankfully the millennial women are demanding that uh, you know they also want to have equal careers and men uh, millennial men are very clear that they're not workaholics they want a good life they want a life which includes work which includes family includes me time so they're open to uh, so they're demanding as much as women because everybody thinks only women need flexibility and me time who uh, men need the same right and thankfully the millennial women men are asking for it which is why i think parenting today is become cool uh, for cool dads and for newbie dads as well it's 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 great to um, it's great to know that uh, a lot of products today uh, baby products are being uh, sold to to be fathers and not just to be mothers right so so those are some positive changes that are happening uh, the other thing i also want to add is i think um, uh, and this is for this is for young listeners especially in the 15 year age category if they are listening into this is um, uh, many people think both men and women think Uh, you know we study we get a job and then you know life takes on right it's important for both men and women to be very very clear that uh, there are while there is well pink is for girls and blue is for boys uh, these are stereotypes that we have all set for ourselves there is really nothing about work and home which is stereotyped anybody can do any job i think as we've seen enough in the world so it's important for uh, kids to be very very clear that if you have a career identity it is beyond gender and you need to focus on uh, enabling equal both at college and at and, and at work i mean it's unfortunate even today we see some of those you know i think there's some viral viral videos uh, locker room videos mm-hmm. uh, conversations that are you know going around in public which still show that you know how 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 boys think about girls etc but uh, i think we need to use media and technology for positive stuff and i and i'm hoping that the way mil like you spoke about cool dads indian fathers becoming cooler or getting more involved in parenting social media and technology also brings a lot of other positive changes with the gen z so to speak yeah um should i should i conclude um perfect yeah all right so i think some things that um i've taken from this call personally are that it is so much harder for a woman to um be in the corporate uh work line from the day she is born uh, she is uh, raised with an expectation that she will grow up to raise a family and um these kind of mindsets even if society starts putting lesser pressure on the woman the woman already has the pressure going on in her own brain um and i think uh, the 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 change that we're seeing and uh how we are getting better at dealing with this kind of discrimination is by more awareness and more education on social media um and like ms pornima said and like i hope all of you will impart in your daily actions social media is an extremely powerful tool to educate people about what's going on in the world and we need to use it in the right way um I am putting a link to their website uh, thinkequal.com uh, with two um eyes in the description I will also put in um a link where you can see the magazine um so make sure to give it a look it's all really good stuff um they post a lot like just one or 35 minutes ago they posted something about um statistics of men and women wearing masks it's, it's really insightful stuff Thank you so much for coming on the show uh, Ms Poonama it's been great to have you I learned a lot today and thank you for listening mm-hmm.